Batman speaking. He is the Dark Knight. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we'll be exploring 10 pieces of trivia you should know about Batman. He first made the world better, with guns. Kicking off our list is a fun fact from our hero's early days. Did you know that Bob Kane's comic creation originally wielded the same weapon that killed his parents? It's strange to think of Batman pumping lead, since it contradicts his one rule and doesn't jive with his use of non-lethal gadgetry. Home of the Batman Before Batman built his lair in Gotham, he lived in the Big Apple. That's right, Batman called New York home until writers developed this fictional city. To choose the name Gotham, all the writers did was look in the phone book, where they found Gotham Jewelers. That was easy. Womanizer by day, mentor by night. Batman and Robin have always been dodging rumors that they're a little too friendly. Come on, they used to sleep in the same bed and the boy wonder sported short shorts. They had to do something, so Bruce Wayne transformed into a talented womanizer. The rumors persisted. Look, you're a real nice girl and I like you a lot, but for right now, shut up. Gotta love that 60s camp. Before Hollywood got hold of Batman, there was a campy 60s TV series starring Adam West and Burt Ward. One way six ounces sits in a tree and is very dangerous. A sparrow with a machine gun. Yes, of course. This show was actually inspired by a Batman-themed Playboy party held by comic aficionado Hugh Hefner. An ABC exec in attendance at the shindig saw the potential for family-friendly content. Good thing he did, or we wouldn't have the bat to see. He's Batman. Batman come and go, but Michael Keaton remains a fan favorite, though that wasn't always the case. After his casting, horrified fans sent 50,000 protest letters to the studio. You know, this house and all this stuff really doesn't seem like you at all. Some of it is very much me. Some of it isn't. Tim Burton ignored them, and Keaton showed he could inhabit the character's dark and obsessive side while pulling off the stiff and soundproof rubber suit. Fans changed their tune, but it was too late. The studio dropped Burton, and Keaton rejected the more kid-friendly Batman Forever. Enter Val. Can I persuade you to take a sandwich with you, sir? I'll get drive through The other Two-Face. We all recognize Tommy Lee Jones and Aaron Eckhart as this two-minded villain. But do you remember another one from Tim Burton's 1989 feature? That's right, Lando Calrissian is Harvey Dent. Billy D. Williams' contract was actually broken, so filmmakers could cast Tommy Lee Jones in Batman Forever. Why can't you just die? But don't worry, he got paid for his troubles. Just imagine how classy and progressive Two-Face could have been. The Joker's number one guy. Ever notice that Jack Nicholson's Joker had a special connection with his top henchman? Well, that's a case of off-screen life carrying over on-screen. Nicholson convinced his bosses to cast his good friend Tracy Walter as Bob. You are my number one. And I... Yes, sir. Not that their friendship could save the artistic goon from one of the Joker's bad moods. The voice of Batman. Only one man has continued playing the caped crusader through thick and thin. We may have different ways of enforcing the law, but we both believe in it. As the official voice of Batman, Kevin Conroy has been bringing the character and his alter ego to life in animated series, features, and video games, including the critically acclaimed Arkham series, for years. He changes tone to differentiate between the millionaire playboy and the Dark Knight, but never takes it quite as far as Christian Bale. Can you get him to talk? Batman 2.0. Christopher Nolan's franchise introduced a completely revamped Batmobile. That's more like it. However, while Batman Begins was being filmed in Chicago, an allegedly drunk driver crashed into the Dark Knight's new beast of a ride, which cost about $750,000 to build. The panicked driver actually thought he had hit an alien spacecraft, and who could blame him? I gotta get me one of those. The Batsuit was also revamped for this franchise. Designers ditched the rubber look and gave the actor more mobility. They also ensured the cowl was separate from the body, meaning the Dark Knight regained full movement of his head, which hadn't been the case since the 60s. Sure made backing out of the driveway easier. The Darkest Knight and Ledger's Joker. Rounding out our list is a bit more casting trivia. Picture this. Christian Bale originally screen-tested to play Robin in Joel Schumacher's Batman Forever, but obviously lost to Chris O'Donnell. We can picture Bale as Robin, but we're not sure O'Donnell could pull off the gruff thing if the roles were reversed. 
Years later, Christopher Nolan handpicked Heath Ledger over Oscar winner Adrian Brody for the role of the Joker, thanks to his fearlessness and willingness to spend six weeks alone in a hotel room developing the character. Look at me. Look at me! Ultimately, Ledger combined the unkempt look of punk rocker Sid Vicious with the mannerisms of Malcolm McDowell's Alex from A Clockwork Orange, and a terrifying villain was born. This is what happens when an unstoppable force meets an immovable object. What's your favorite piece of Batman trivia? For more entertaining trivia lists, be sure to visit us at WatchMojo.com.